Hello everyone. Today we are going to look at the chemistry of sulfur halides, which are very important intermediates in organic chemistry, and they are used for the synthesis of epoxide from corresponding aldehydes and ketone and cyclopropane from corresponding alpha butane saturated aldehyde and ketone. Now let's look at how we synthesize these sulfur halides. Okay. So our synthesis starts from dimethyl sulfide, which on treatment with methyl iodide, because these methyl iodide you on the sulfur uh, sulfur uh, has these lone pair of electrons, and it is quite nucleophilic in nature. So if you add any alkylating agent like methyl iodide, it attacks the methyl group, and iodide being a good leaving group, it leaves, and it leads to the formation of this trimethyl sulfonium iodide. Now, this sulfur has a positive charge. It means it is a deficient of electrons. So, in order to fulfill its needs, what it does, it withdraws the electron from the carbon which is next to it. As a result of which, this hydrogen becomes quite acidic in nature. Now, if you add a base in the particular reaction, then it leads to the formation of dimethyl sulfonium methylide. Now, since such Elides are also called unstabilized elide. Now, since it does not have any group which can stabilize, uh, which can stabilize this negative charge, that is why such elides are quite reactive in nature, and they react with carbonyl group to lead to the, and they lead to the formation of the epoxide. Now, let's look at the mechanism of a reaction, which will help us understand why do they form epoxide. Instead of an olefin, which generally happens in the case of Wittig reagent. Okay, now this is what happens in when we treat carbonyl with the Wittig reagent, we get the olefin, and with trimethyl sulfonium methylide, we get epoxide. Now the first step of the reaction is same, which is in both the case. The negative charge, the carbonyl, attacks the electrophilic carbonyl uh, carbon. And it leads to the formation of this interbate. Now, at this stage, there are two possibilities. One possibility is that this oxygen can attack this CH2 and it can release this dimethyl sulfide and it can form the epoxide. The other possibility is that these oxygen and sulfur they can form a betaine-like species, which ha exactly happens in the case of phosphorus, and which can dissociate to form the olefin. But this step does not takes place. And the reason for that is that is because the bond strength of this sulfur oxygen bond is not as much as compared to phosphorus oxygen. This is somewhere 367 kilocalorie per mole. Whereas in the case of Wittig reagent, the bond strength of phosphorus carb, uh, phosphorus oxygen group, which is the driving force of the for the reaction, is somewhere near 529 kilocalorie as a result of which in the case of Wittig reagent there is a formation of betaine species and which leads to the formation of triphenyl phosphenoxide in which we have this phosphorus oxygen bond and since this bond is very strong that is why in the case of Wittig reagent we get the olefin whereas in this case we get the epoxide now let's look at Unstable. Now, so we, now we have looked at the unstabilized elide. Let's see how we can stabilize this unstabilized elide. Now, we don't need to do anything. Just we need to put an electron drawing group next to the negative charge. Now, what that negative charge can do? It can undergo conjugation with the electron drawing group. Let us suppose we have this. negative charge now if we can put an electron withdrawing group next to it this electron withdrawing group it can be cyano or it can be coet now what can happen here let us suppose i have taken a cyano group now this negative charge now can undergo conjugation with the cyanide it can result in the formation of this resonating species as a result of which this negative charge can be stabilized okay now let's look at how the reactivity pattern differs once we have these stabilized elides now let us suppose 
if we have this stabilized elide stabilized elide and we carry out a reaction with alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl what it does it leads to the formation of an cyclopropane because this is what happens we have cyano here okay now this negative charge comes this attacks and it leaves so what it does it leads to the formation of these cyclopropane derivatives so it means they are they are very useful whenever if we, in case if we want to prepare a cyclopropane moiety then we can use stabilized elides and if we want to prepare an epoxide we can use unstabilized elide now let's look at one or two reactions of stabilized elides suppose instead of cyano if we have this asteroid group and we treat it with the benzyl then it will lead to the formation of an epoxide since we don't have any alpha beta unsaturated here uh, group so it will lead to the formation of an epoxide in this case CO. so this is the product that we will get okay Now instead, now instead of having an electron withdrawing group, we can also form sulfoxonium elide, which are nothing but elides that are generated from dimethyl sulfoxide. Okay, so when we have this dimethyl methyl iodide when such dimethyl sulfoxane elide are treated with base it leads to the formation of dimethyl sulfoxonium elides now initially what we had we had an electron withdrawing group somewhere here which stabilizes the negative charge in this case that uh, instead of having an electron withdrawing group what we have is a carbonyl group so now this negative charge can be stabilized by the oxygen so we can have this stabilization that happens in the case of dimethyl sulfoxonium elide and we can quickly imagine if that is the case then such moieties also react with alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compounds to give rise to cyclopropane now we are going to now look at few of the examples which are absolutely imperative from exams point of view the first being okay now if we look at this example very very carefully we can clearly see that in the first case in the first case we have this unstabilized elide 
so it reacts with the carbonyl and it leads to the formation of this epoxide ring whereas when we have the sulf uh, sulfoxonium elide and this is an alpha beta alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl so here what we end up getting is in cyclopropen species now one thing which we should be very careful of and we should remember that such elides they do not react with isolated double bond this is an isolated double bond so it does not react with okay so that uh, this dimethyl sulfoxonium elides or stabilized elide they do not react with isolated alkenes this is something we should always keep in mind that is why the reaction only takes place at these two side and whereas this side remains unstretched so we can also say that the dimethyl sulfoxonium elide are chemoselective in nature there are two double bonds it selectively attacks this double bond which is in conjugation with the carbonyl now let's look at one or two important reactions which are very important okay now if we look at this particular reaction as i said this double bond is not con conjugation with the carbonyl so this is an isolated double bond this is an isolated so it does not undergo reaction with dimethyl sulfonium elide here what happens when we treat this with unstabilized elide this is the minor product and we get the major product this is the major product this is formed in 94% this is 6% whereas when we treat it with tri dimethyl sulfoxonium elide this is the major product and this is minor this is something that we need to keep in mind this is something these are the type of questions that are generally asked in exam now let's look at cyclopropane moiety having a tertiary butyl group at 4 position reaction with unstabilized elide reaction with stabilized elide so we can have two products in one of the product you have this oxygen at the axial position in the other you have this oxygen at the equatorial position whenever you treat it with the unstabilized elides the preference of this is to attack from the axial position that is why this is the major product and the, this product is the minor product this is something that you must bear in mind and whenever we treat it with the dimethyl sulfoxonium elide this is the sole product this is the sole product that you get and this is not formed at all okay so this is something that is very very important now let's look at other reactions suppose you have
this carbonyl and you have this species okay so this reacts and it leads to the formation of the epoxide so this is something that you get and when you treat it with the acid it leads to the formation of four member species so this is a very important question from exam point of view this is very very important that you must keep in mind when you have this and treat it with the elide we know it forms the uh, epoxide and under acidic condition the ring expansion takes place and we get this four member product now suppose we have this species this starting material this substrate and we treat it with there can be a huge variety of stabilized and unstabilized elides now we can clearly imagine here this is a stabilized lead. now this double bond can also be written like like that and just to know whether this is a stabilizer or unstabilizer we can clearly see we have this sulfonyl group so this negative charge can easily undergo conjugation with these groups that is why it is a stabilized elide and if it is a stabilized elide we know it will always form the cyclopropane ring so this is something that one must bear in mind so this will be the desired product in this case and here we have an important molecule this entire moiety this is called venreb amide venreb amide and maybe in, in one of the talks i'm going to talk specifically about the venreb amide they are very very special species let us suppose if i want to make a ketone if I want to carry out a Grignard addition of methyl magnesium bromide, then I will end up getting acetone as a product. Whereas, whenever you treat an ester with the methyl magnesium bromide or any Grignard reagent, what you end up getting is a tertiary alcohol as the major product. So, that is the difference with these venereb amides. They help you form a variety of species. So, I am going to make a talk on this particular species as well. Okay. So, these were the few examples. Now, let's look at one or two more important examples. And nowadays, uh, there, are, there are modern sulfoxonium, sulf, sulf, sulfoxoenemes also have been synthesized. Now, let's look at how they synthesize these sulfoxamines. You have this sulfone moiety and you take sodium azide h2so4 in chloroform it leads to the formation of hydrozoic acid so what you get is this sulfoxamine sulfoxamine and if we treat it with this alkylating agent this alkylating agent is used for the N methylation. So, what we get is an dimethyl product. And if we can treat it with the base, then we can clearly see what we end up getting. We get this elide. Here we have positive charge on oxysulfur. Okay. And this can again react with the aldehyde and leads to the formation of the epoxide species. Now let's look at one more example. You have this species and you treat it with trimethyl, uh, sorry, methyl iodide. You form this and it was treated with potassium tritiobutoxide. So we can clearly see once it is treated, it will form an imine here. Not amine, sorry. 
sulfur elide methylide it will form sulfur methylide here and this is going to attack now we can question since this is a unstabilized elide we can really question why it has attacked the double bond so let us suppose let's imagine a direct addition of this negative charge on the carbonyl we have one two three four five six seven seven membered ring the if we know a little bit about organic chemistry then we can say that seven membered rings are not thermodynamically favorable and uh, so that's why such reactions they do not takes place whereas once this ch2 attacks this carbon it leads to the formation of five membered ring which is more favorable as compared to a seven membered ring so what you get is methyl ch2 here and this carbon bond and once this negative charge comes back it attacks this sorry it attacks this carbon and this is released so what we end up getting is this epoxide this cyclopropane species now this question was asked in net exam in december 2016 and if we treat the same species with rennie nickel rennie nickel then rennie nickel are known to cleave carbon sulfur bond so the product that you get is this and this entire sequence was asked in gate 2017 and gate 2011 so you can clearly imagine how important the chemistry of sulfonium elides or trisulfoxonium elide is to understand the exact mechanism of the reaction can help us solve many questions i hope you enjoyed this video Thanks a lot for watching the video